Hello and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. I am so glad that you are here with me tonight. This is a YouTube live stream event and today is Monday, March 29th. Whether you are here watching the replay or you are joining us for the live stream, I'm so glad that you've come by for the fun because I've got a card that's going to charm your family and friends because it has a, a magic slider element to it. Now, at first glance, you're going to think, eek, how did you do that? But it is so easy when you see the internal mechanics. Now, I'm going to walk you through step by step. Now, the great thing about tonight's live is you're going to be able to find a link down in the video description below, right underneath the title. That will lead you over to the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies. If you scroll down, you'll actually see a red bar that says download the card details, and you can get all that information there. In addition to the card I'm going to be demonstrating for you this evening, I also have two other samples to share with you for a total of three different cards. And like I said, I've got lots of tips to share with you so that you can recreate this at home. If you have a stamp apparatus stamp positioning tool, this is the project for that, that amazing tool. You're going to want to break that out. I'm kind of excited tonight. So glad to see so many of you here with me. Now I have two housekeeping items I'd like to go over with you before we get started. First, I want to introduce you to Megan. You'll see Megan's name here in blue, and she is my virtual assistant. And yes, she's very much a real person. We are separated by 800 miles, but Megan is here to help interact with you and answer your questions, provide links and that type of thing. Because quite honestly, once I get started, it's really difficult to keep up with comments while I'm trying to stamp. And that's what you came here to see, right? The stamping. And then finally, we love to interact with you. I come back and I read every single comment, whether it is in the live stream or you leave a comment with the replay. So please do us a favor. Log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That's what YouTube requires. And then you're able to chat and leave comments. And we'd love to hear back from you. I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and turn the camera down and get you all zoomed in. Here we go. Don't forget to like, comment, and share tonight. That is the highest compliment you can pay me, is if you share tonight's video with your crafting friends. I'm just going to get you all zoomed in here and make sure that we are good and centered so you have a really nice vantage point. I'm just going to bring you in just a little bit closer. Okay, I think we're good. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the card base itself. And there's nothing different about this. This is five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it at four and a quarter right before you joined me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crease up on that score line. And I'm going to use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. Whenever you're doing a fun fold or a card that's going to have a magical twist like this one, which means there's going to be moving parts, don't be afraid to re uh, reinforce those creases. Now, unlike cards we've made before, this time the fold is going to be at the bottom. So you have to think backwards. So this is going to be quite different. The next thing we're going to do is you're going to use designer series paper, which I am on this sample. Remember, I've got several others to share with you. I am going to adhere that here to the front first. If yours has a pattern like mine, please make sure that it's going in the right direction so that the card opens at the top. Boy, did I learn the hard way. So I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet for that because I tend to be a little bit messy when it comes to adhesives. I'm not a liquid glue girl, but certainly you could use that. This is going to keep my work surface sticky free. The silicone craft sheet repels all adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue, especially if you get a little zealous like I do. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that over and look at that little heart pattern paper. Isn't that fun? Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers are double-sided, which means that you're going to be able to use them well beyond the theme that they were intended for. That really is a great cost-saving tip for you. You're going to be able to find all of today's products uh, in my online store over at lisastampstudio.com. You're going to see that I was very generous with that, and that's because we're going to have to create an opening here, and I want to make sure I don't have an open area here once that's done. So I went around the perimeter and made an X down the center, again, checking to make sure that your opening is near the top, and then you are going to center this. And I'm looking to leave that nice white margin all the way around. Okay, next step is we are going to have to die cut, or maybe in your case, it might be punch an opening here. Now, I'm going to be using my layering squares dies. There's a sad story about these dies. These are on the current retiring products list. We have a brand new annual catalog. This one's on its way out. And the new one is on its way in on May 4th. And whenever we re 
um, bring in a new catalog, we take a whole bunch of products and we retire them to make room for all the new current amazing things. And sadly, these layering square dies are what I call on the chopping block. They're on their way out. I have loved these as well as the layering ovals, which are also on that list. The reason I love them is the value. You're going to get cascading sizes of not only the plain squares, but the scallop squares as well. These are only available like all the retiring products while supplies last. You're going to want to head over to lisastampstudio.com and you're going to want to shop before it's too late. You're going to center this on the front of that card base. Just look visually. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pass this through your die cutting machine. Now, I did that before you joined me just to save a little bit of space here and some time. And let me pull out that sample for you here. And it looks like this. So we've got an opening here at the top. Remember, we're going to do the top is going to be open. So we're just going to fold this in half. I'm going to go back over that to make sure we've got a nice crisp crease. So we've got an opening here for what is going to create the magic of this card. All right, so let's now work to the internal portion of this card so I can show you how fun this is going to come out. I'm going to set that aside. This is where your Stamparatus stamp positioning tool is going to come into play. I love this product. I love it for lots of reasons. First of all, I love the size. I love that it comes with two of the plates you can put them on the hinges at the exact same time. So there's a spot here at the top for the other plate. There's a spot here on the side. So if you're doing multiple stamping images, you can use them interchangeably. Love that. The magnets that are included are very, very strong. And because this is actually acting as your clear block, this is where your stamp is going to go. Now I'm gonna be using an image from the stamp set called Snail It. Now I'm gonna give you a lot of tips about this technique and this type of card as we go along. But I wanted to use this as a single image. And I think when you're brand new with this card, you're gonna to wanna to use a single image to try. Wait till you see the other samples that have multiples. But you can notice here that this plate goes a little bit on a slant. So I like to take my stamp case and I'm going to stick that right underneath there. That's going to make that nice and straight for me to use. I'm going to slide over into your camera view a little bit. I'm going to grab my white cardstock. This is sized three and a quarter by three and a half. And I want to make sure I've got this going the right way because we want this to be the three and a quarter inch side here. And then I'm going to use one of those magnets to tack that down in place. Like I said, it comes with two, but these are extremely strong. And you're going to want to make sure you don't bring the magnets together because the magnetic force is that strong that they can snap the magnets. I find I only need one. By working in the corner, I'm assured that I have nice, tight, proper alignment. Then you're gonna take your image, that, that cute snail, and I'm gonna go just below the center mark. So I'm looking here and that looks like about center and I'm just gonna move it down just a smidge. And then all you have to do now is close that clear hinge to your stamparatus and it's going to pick up your stamp for you. So it takes the place of a clear block. I'm going to bring in my Memento Black ink pad, and I'm going to take off that lid, and we're going to ink this face up. And I love this because you can see where you're going, so you make sure you don't miss one of those cute little eyeballs or another area on the stamp. And if you do, that's the great part of a stamp positioning tool because you can go right back over it. And I am going to rub, and then I'm going to lift. If you had had an area here that wasn't dark enough, all you have to do is re-ink it and re-stamp it because the positioning is perfect because it's held in place. Now this is gonna have to be cleaned because we're gonna make a change here. So I brought it in and one of my Stampin' Chamois that I actually cut in half and I love these because it makes it a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable. So I can clean it right on here without peeling it off every single time. Now the other thing I wanna tell you about the Stampin' Chamois is it does look like this when you've loved it. It's okay, it gets stained, it's not dirty, it looks like it's dirty, but it's just from the pigmentation of your inks. So once they're beautifully and purple and solid in the beginning means this is well loved on its way when you're moving into all your inks. Now I'm going to take this one off and I'm going to set that off to the side for just a moment. And I am going to bring in what I call my magic layer. And I know that's going to be near impossible for you to see. But this is a piece of acetate, better known as a window sheet in my online store. This is cut the exact same size. So it's three and a quarter by three and a half. I'm measuring just off your camera because they are very close in size. I wanted to make sure I've got it going the right way. I'm gonna add a piece of grid paper underneath there that fits the Stamparatus perfectly. 
because I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to see. And I'm going to add my magnet back here. Remember, this has not been moved. So this is in the exact same positioning as the image we just stamped. But this time, because it's on a window sheet, regular Memento ink is not going to stick. It's never going to dry. You're going to need to switch over to stays on ink. This is a solvent based ink, has a really funny kind of almondy smell to it, but it is a permanent, permanent ink. So you're not going to want to get this on your clothes, but it's great to use for tiles and cork and foil and all kinds of fun things. And this is great for the acetate. So once you're aligned, let's go ahead and let's ink up that snail face up here again. And we're going to ink that up and make sure we've got everything covered. Just like before, if you miss a spot, don't worry, you can come back. The other thing is acetate tends to be a little bit slippery. And this is where the Stamparatus is really wonderful because it holds it in place with that magnet. Now, just like before, you're going to go ahead and take your chamois and you are going to wipe this off. We're going to go through one more step with that stamp that I want to talk you through. Let's go ahead and take this off. And I'm going to show it to you here. This is going to need a little time to dry. So I'm going to set this off to the side as well. Let's talk about this image right here. I don't ever recommend that you put any solvents on these clear mats. You want to protect them. I like just water. But I do know that the solvent-based ink from the Stazon is very staining to my stamps. And I want to make sure that none of that pigmentation comes off if I decide to use this in a light pink or a light yellow. So I am going to switch now to one of my clear blocks just to give this a bath. Now, if this is too much trouble for you and you'd rather hold it in your hand, that's totally okay as well. But let me show you what I do. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my stamp is damp from my chamois. And then I'm going to come in with the Stazon cleaner. This stuff works like a charm. It's got a little roller tip on it, kind of like you would with shoe polish. And you're going to see it. Look at it. It starts to get all muddy. It lifts off that pigmented, um, actually that solvent-based ink to clean your stamp. You're going to want to make sure that that stays capped very, very well. And then you're going to wipe this off. Now, typically what I do is I have this off camera and I have it on my table so it's nice and flat. And I go ahead and I clean it so I can get inside those crevices really, really good. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry it really quick on the other side of my stamp and scrub. All that leftover pigmentation that was here is now gone, which means it's safe for me to use in a lighter color so that you don't have to worry about transferring any of that. The one thing I can tell you, I've been stamping for over 22 years. If you take really good care of your stamps, they're going to last you forever. All right, so before you join me, I had one that was dried ahead of time. I wanted to make sure. I'm going to leave that off to the side while that other one dries. And then remember our image? Well, we're going to do a little coloring, and I've got one that's already finished for you, but I do want to talk you through some coloring tips because I'm going to be using alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers, which are my favorite coloring tool because they make me look really professional, and I'm not. <laughs> so I love to color with them because it leaves you flawless coverage. Now, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to work here on the snail's body. And you know, because this is very character, your snail can be whatever color you want. And I'm choosing to use Pool Party because I liked this little bit of pigment change that's going to coordinate with the designer series paper. The markers are dual ended and they're designated here by a line underneath the cap. You can use whatever tip that's easier for you. I kind of choose the one depending on how much coverage I have to cover. So let's go ahead with the thicker one tonight. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. And like I said, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but we're going to go ahead and work on just part of this body here so you can see how it's going to work. Please notice that I am turning the cardstock and not turning my hand. That makes it super, super easy. There's a very fine chiseled tip here, which is going to allow you to get inside those little tiny areas. And because this is an alcohol-based marker, you're going to want to stay within the perimeter of the lines, especially when they're brand new and good and juicy. Alcohol has a tendency to spread. So you're not going to want to get too zealous very close to those lines. That needs a couple seconds for that alcohol base to evaporate. And this is where the magic of coloring comes in with these markers. This is now the darker shade for that same color. And they do come in the combo, so you get them both. And obviously, you can color just like this, which means any repeated marks are going to evaporate and leave a continuous color stream. But let's add some shading. So I'm going to use this area down here kind of as my cheat marks. And I'm going to determine that's going to be the darkest area. Again, I'm going to pivot the paper to make it easy for my hand, and I'm going to add some dark color right across here at the side. 
Now, you don't have to cover the whole thing, and how much you use is completely up to you. So just to give you an idea, I'm just going to go a little bit on that side there, and then I'm going to cap that. And just like before, you're going to want to give that a few seconds for that alcohol base to evaporate because the next step is to go back to your lightest shade. And we are going to pull that dark into the light so that this harsh line here between those two shades is actually going to start to dissipate and look more blended. Let me show you. Start here and pull. It's not going to look like much right away because you have to allow that of alcohol to evaporate. And if you work too quickly, you're going to be disappointed. But when it's all done, it's pretty darn amazing. And I love, love, love these markers. And look at that. Isn't that fun? And like I said, I use that same exact concept for my finished one, which is right here that I wanted to share with you. All right. So now we have the colored one. and we have the outline one. Well, this is where the magic comes in. Let's start by putting these together. Because we use the positioning tool, these two are going to line up perfectly. I want to show you that again. One right on top of the other. We're going to need to secure them, and then we are going to create a mechanism for this. So let's start by securing that. There's lots of ways, and I'll be honest with you, I tried tons of them, but my favorite was really simple, and I'm going to go ahead and share that with you. Grab yourself a glue dot, and I only used one. You can use more if you want, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take the center of your acetate or the window sheet, and you're going to place it right here at the top of that area. So I'm looking to make sure that I don't come down too far, and I'm just going to press any excess of that glue dot, I can kind of just curl to the back. And then I'm looking to line these up. So I'm holding this free from the top so it doesn't stick before I want it to. And then once I've got it aligned just right, we're going to give that a little squeeze right there. And that little glue dot is all we need to hold these two layers together. But we want to hide that because that's not real pretty, is it? Not only that, we need a pull mechanism for the slider. And that's where this came in. I used an um, old one inch circle punch. You can use whatever you'd like. I did score it in half with my little trimmer. I am gonna go over it with my bone folder because I wanna make sure that that crease stays nice and flat. And I didn't even fold it in half perfectly, look at that. But you know what, it's really not going to matter. You're gonna need to use either liquid glue or adhesive. And I don't like liquid glue when I'm working with acetate because if you shift a little bit left or right, it leaves a muddy kind of surface. It's kind of cloudy when it dries. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be really brave on this little tiny piece and I'm gonna use adhesive. We got this, right? So I'm gonna get my adhesive started and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run that here down the center and I'm gonna work on my ends. Now the Stampin' Seal Plus is my preferred adhesive and I love it because it comes in a cartridge and it's refillable, but it's super duper strong. But the other thing I love about it is it comes out in little tabs. So if there's a little overage, you can easily just kind of curl up those ends there. All right, so now we're going to take this. I want to make sure I don't have any adhesive on the front. And we're going to sandwich this right over that glue dot. And then we're going to tack that in place. I'm looking to try to make it centered. And then I'm going to squeeze. So far, so good, right? All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a hole so that we can add some ribbon for the slider portion. So I'm going to go ahead and use an old tool that I have had in my studio forever. Do any of you have this? This is called the crop -a dial I know you're thinking, what? <laughs> it looks like an ancient uh, torture device, doesn't it? But it has hole punches here on the side, on both sides, actually. You're going to see that the holes are larger. Years ago, we used to use this for making um, brads and eyelets. But, but I love this because it goes through lots of layers of cardstock at a time. And obviously, with the acetate and the cardstock here, this is a little bit thicker than normal. So I have arthritic hands, and I find that this is a lot easier for me to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slide this here, and I am going to look visually for the center. And I like to flip it upside down and give it a little peek from the back to make sure I'm down deep enough. I can go a little bit more, and then we are going to punch. And that's going to give you your hole, and it's effortless. Stampin' Up! used to sell this eons ago. And if you're like me, you hang on to your punches and your dies, and you probably don't get rid of them. So I have that. My beautiful pool party sheer ribbon is going to work perfect for this. I folded it in half, so I have a loop here at the top. Believe it or not, this is one question I get asked all the time. When you do this loop through, mine is always backwards. So let me give you a hint. 
when you have the loop, you want to thread from the front to the back. That's how you get the pretty front. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this inside here and let me grab my beloved take your pick tool. And that's going to help me guide that ribbon right through to there so I don't have to worry about pulling it. And then we're going to pull that loop through. So we threaded it from the front to the back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this loop and I'm going to take those raw ends and I'm going to slip them through the hole. Now the worst thing you can do is try to pull both of these at the same time, especially if you're working with one layer of paper because you don't want to rip this. So you're going to work on one and then you're going to pull on the other and you're going to do it gently and you're going to pick up the slack. And the great thing is, is the pretty end is going to be here and that on the back side. Now we can always trim these when we're done later, which is what we're going to do. But now we need the magic mechanism. So let's go ahead and work on that part next. I didn't even bother scoring this when you joined me because it's rudimentary. This is four inches by seven inches. I scored it in half at three and a half inches. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to crease up on that score line to reinforce it. This time, the fold is going to be at the top. And we are going to create an opening here to hold and separate this. And I loved using the classic label punch. Now your punches can be used upside down, which is the way I love to use them because it makes it super easy for you to see where you're going and it makes it easy on your hand. So I'm gonna turn this now so that my crease is here closest to me. I'm gonna use it upside down so I can see where I'm going. I'm gonna navigate this in and I'm gonna turn it sideways. Do you see just a little bit of cardstock here on the edge of my punch? And then I'm looking, oh, to go about halfway. So I'm looking here at the front of the punch about halfway across, and you know, no one's gonna see this. This is the internal part. And we're gonna punch that out. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna slide over and we're gonna do the exact same thing now on this side. So I'm gonna hold this here, and I'm looking to try to keep a little bit of cardstock here on the edge, just like we did on the right. And I'm looking to line this up the best that I can, and then we're going to punch. None of us ever does anything straight. So if it's uneven here, don't sweat it. Here's a tip. Take your bone folder and go over it. And what that's going to do is there's any little jagged miss mark, it's gonna make it nice and smooth. The other important thing about this you need to know is if you happen to have a little piece of cardstock here or here that's sticking out, take your scissors and give that a little bit of a snip because you don't want anything to impede on this track. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we are going to make sure that this is going to fit through it because we can always go back and cut a little bit more and see that's a little bit tight. I mean, it fits. Oh, you know what? Maybe it is perfect. I, that, that's like beginner's luck. I'm telling you what, that usually never happens for me. I think that's gonna work really, really good. If ever you're afraid that's a little bit too tight and it might be just a smidgen. So let's go back in and let's just show you how to do this. I am gonna move this over just a tiny wee bit. Do you see it? And let's punch this again. There we go. Again, if we have uneven portions here, we're gonna just rub it away. Don't you worry about it. The next thing is, is this goes in like so, and we're gonna check it for sizing. But here is where the magic comes in. Let's separate these. So the acetate's gonna be on the front, the colored image on the back, and guess what this is for? This is going to do the separation. So this goes down inside the hole, so that's the colored portion. This goes down on, side, on top. Now, you're gonna notice that this is going to meet perfectly. But what's gonna happen is, once this is all assembled to the card base, this is gonna come right out, right? Because there's nothing holding it there. So we have to put what I call a stopper. So let me show you how that's done. Let's thread this one more time, front to back, push it down, and then we're gonna open it up. Down here at the bottom of the colored image is where your stopper needs to go. It's nothing fancy, no one's ever gonna see it. I cut a piece of cardstock. This is half an inch by four inches, which is the width of this mechanism piece that's holding the slider. There's a couple things you can do. If you are good with liquid glue, you can put a very small thin bead here, or in my case, because I'm horrible with liquid glue, I use way too much, I'm gonna put it here on top of the cardstock. So I'm gonna add it right down the center. You do not want too much because you don't want it to fall on those outside edges. Otherwise that's obviously going to stick to here. So I'm gonna make sure that this is centered and I'm looking to make sure it's near the bottom. And then once I have it, I'm gonna open this up. Remember nothing sticks to this and I'm gonna work this right across here. So let me, 
I want to make sure that's up right in the right spot. There we go. So right across here and across here. So I'm just adding like a barb, okay? Now what's going to happen is that little strip is going to stop it from coming all the way out. Look, isn't that great? All right, we're almost finished. Let's put these two pieces together. What I have now is the card base. Remember we had the opening at the top. Well, we need a small notch here in order to pull out the slider. So I've got my old one inch circle punch here. You're gonna hold the open ends together because we're gonna notch them. Look for the center. I actually made a little tiny mark there before you joined me because I wasn't good at eyeballing it. And then I'm just gonna punch just a small portion here. Remember, you can always punch more if it's not enough. And that might not be enough. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more. It's because you're all watching me. It's always easier when you're by yourself, isn't it? Have you ever noticed that when you stamp with your friends, you're not nearly as confident as when you stamp by yourself? <laughs> Am I the only one? All right. What we're going to do now is we are going to add this to this. And I cannot wait to show you this magic slider card. What you're going to do is you're going to want to make sure that your pull tab is aligned near the top of your notch. So we're going to have to secure this to the inside of this card base. And the easiest way to do that is by taking your silicone craft sheet and turning this upside down. And we're gonna add adhesive here to this back mechanism. So you don't want it to attach to anything that's here. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna go across the bottom and across here. All right, that looks pretty good. Anything that's hanging over, I'm just gonna kind of turn it because I got a little zealous there. Now what we're going to do is we are going to layer this to the inside. Again, I am looking to align this notch to the opening. And then once that looks pretty good, we are going to just press it down. I'm looking to see that these are about equal on both sides. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to add adhesive here to seal this. This is going to kind of make a pouch. You're going to need strips of adhesive here. Liquid glue will work fine or tearing tape but this stamp and seal plus is very very strong so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start here and i'm going to add myself a strip here and i'm going to add another strip on this side i kind of turned it and i had to make sure i got my strip straight and another one here you want to make sure that you don't touch the adhesive for this mechanism because we need this to slide all right so let's just make sure my adhesive is all within my perimeter it is and then all you're going to do is you are going to close up this pocket there is no reason to add adhesive here. I've tried it and all it did was create a little bit of bulk. That's entirely up to you, but are you ready for the magic? Okay, so, oh wait, we forgot the greeting. <laughs> I have that made that ahead of time. I'm like, oh, we need a happy birthday card. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add this with some dimensionals. Now I wanna give you a couple tips about this. I do not recommend putting it on the slider because obviously it's gonna navigate through here. So I'm gonna work here near the bottom. So let me flip that over and let me grab my full size dimensionals. And I've got a couple here. I think we'll only need a couple. And I'm gonna balance those here on the back pretty well. And let's remove those paper backings. I only had two, so I didn't even need my take your pick tool. And then what we're gonna do now is we are gonna attach that here near the bottom. I don't want the dimensionals to rest on my window sheet. Okay, watch what happens. Are you ready? Here comes the magic. Black and white turns to color. Oh, is this not just like the funnest thing? I'm telling you what, they're going to be doing this over and over and over again because they are going to be amazed. So fun. Plenty of room here on the back to stamp another sentiment or leave a message, but wait until you see the other cards. Are you ready? All right, so we have this one, and then I created two more for you. This one uses the stamp set called Back on Your Feet, and I specifically wanted to make it a get well card. Very simple color concept. This is Granny Apple Green. I used the Coordinating Designer Series paper with that little pull tab cardstock. Added some braided trim here. Are you ready? Oh, there's my little sloth. Isn't this adorable? I'm telling you what, the kids are going to go crazy for this. I don't care how old that kid is. Because I know if I got this, I'd be like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Isn't that great? All right. And then I have one other for you. And this is the one I was telling you about in the beginning. This one is multiple layers. So these are all individual stamps. You're going to notice I didn't use any designer series paper around the border. 
I am going to recommend that you start this by trying it with a single image stamp until you get the hang of it. It's not hard, but just get a feel for it. Then what I did is I actually stamped pieces. So I stamped the boots first on the white and then on the acetate. And then I added the white again and I added the umbrella and I did the acetate. So there was some back and forth, but it's a great way for you to upscale your design. Are you ready for this one? Really simple, rain or shine, you're always on my mind. Okay, I gotta grab it right, and then we're gonna pull it out. Look at that. Oh my gosh, does it get any cuter? Isn't this adorable? What looks like a black and white card just comes out to be magic. So there we go, we have this one, and then we have our little sloth here, and then of course we've got our happy birthday snail here. I'm gonna turn the camera around, and while I'm doing that, I want you to tell me which one is your favorite, and I'm gonna be sharing the next live date with you. Oh, it's fun to read your comments. Thank you so much. Isn't that fun? I know, and the magic is simply just two pieces put together with a mechanism in the middle to separate them so that when you pull, they come together. The Stamparatus Stamp Positioning Tool is worth its weight in gold. Everyone who has it, can vouch for that. I can tell you that right now. It's an incredible stamp positioning tool. All right. I am so excited to be sharing the next live date with you. But before I do that, I want to encourage you to head over to lisasstampstudio.com. There you're going to be able to shop. Make sure you click on that rewards tab because I have very generous and exclusive rewards for my customers. I love them and treat them very, very well. And I would love to give those rewards to you as well. You can shop in my online store 24 seven, super convenient, and make sure you scoop up those retiring products before they're gone. Here's the good news. A lot of them are on sale, so now's even a better time to shop. Those items are only available until May 3rd while supplies last. Really important tip for you to know there. Make sure you do me a favor and hit the like button, which is the thumbs up here on YouTube. That certainly helps us to keep content free. Share tonight's video with your crafting friends. Let them know about this brand new magic slider card that they can create themselves. And mark your calendar or hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you'll get notifications when I come back live with you next Monday for an incredible fun fold card you're not gonna wanna miss. That date I'm looking at my calendar is Monday, April 5th. It will be 8 p.m. Eastern time right here at Lisa's Stamp Studio here on YouTube. I really hope that you will join me. Thank you for being here. Megan, thanks for all your hard work. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye-bye.